بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسبح لله ما في السماء الحمد لله الذي أمر عباده بفضائل الأعمال ونهاهم عن سيئاتها. Praises, adorations, appreciation, exaltations of all forms are due to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, who has commanded His servant to come up with act of righteousness and discourage them, warn them against the opposite of righteousness. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahda'u ila sharika la Be having the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without a partner, without an associate. Wa ashadu anna nabiyyana wa sayyidana wa mawilana wa murabbina wa muallimana muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. I also bear witness that our apostle sent to us by Allah, our leader, our teacher, our tutor, our role model, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, remain a great servant and a great messenger of Allah. Salawatu Rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi wa ala ali wa ashabi wa sallama tasrima. That the peace, blessings and favors of mercies of Allah be showered upon him. May this be extended to his household, his companion, with the peace of Allah. Amma abad, fattakullah ayyual mu'minun. Servant of Allah, believers in the oneness of Allah, fear Allah. Be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa tubu illallah. Repent unto Allah without wasting the time. Repent unto Allah. Was takfiruhu. Seek Allah's forgiveness. Inna hu kana ghafuran rahima. Of course, Allah remains acceptable of repentance and a sweet forgiver with mercy. Ibad Allah wa ya ikhwat al-iman. Honorable servant of Allah, brothers and sisters, in Islamic monotheism, in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the din al-Islam, huwa dinu takaful wa tarabut. The religion of Islam is not just a religion, it's a way of life that is full of solidarity. Wa tarabutu, interdependence coming together as one, unity, is what Islam is all about. Religion of mercy and a religion that is full of support for each and every one of us. Islam, like I said, is not just like every other religion is a religion that believes in its principle what we call togetherness well each team communal effort each team islam wants us to become a nation all together and islam discourages disunity islam discourages division among our brothers and sisters we should stand against being divided to be ruled islam does not encourage our disunity our disparities in all we do what islam encourages is unity solidarity togetherness and to be supportive to one another. That is what Islam stands for. And we have to understand this better. 
ibad Allah wa hadha min kamal al-islam wa azamatihi this is part of the greatness of Islam and the perfection that Islam has over all other so called religion is annahu salih li kulli zamanin wa makanin of course Islam is a religion that is relevant at all times at all places anywhere you bring about Islam especially where people have proper understanding of the teachings and principles of Islam no man on the surface of heart will not embrace Islam and that is the reason why every muslim must see himself or herself as an ambassador of the prophet of Islam it is regrettable today that people don't really have proper knowledge of Islam and some that do have little get disappointed in the way Muslims practice Islam today. For if they do know what Islam is all about and see the practical aspect of it for Muslims, wallahi, very good number of people of the world will embrace Islam. Islam stands alone, stands different stands above all other religion because of its perfection don't forget allah that has this religion says ali ma akmaltu lakum dinakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam dinan allah hasn't said this said this to any religion on the surface of the heart i have completed this religion for you and I perfected it for you and I'm pleased with it as a religion as a way of life Allah will ask us if you misbehave to the hatred of certain category of people of Islam you have question to answer as Muslims you have to behave in such a way that people will grab and understand and discover the beauty of Islam in you if you are the reason why some people hate Islam, my brothers and sisters, you are in trouble with Allah because you have just misrepresented Islamic monotheisms. And the ambassadorial responsibility placed on you as one of the Ummah of Rasulullah has just been destroyed. You have to prove yourself as a good ambassador of Islam, a good ambassador of Prophet Muhammad, and a good representative of Muslims in general. Yes, Allah is one of Ta'ala is of course pleased with Islam. Take it or leave it. There is no system on the service of the heart. There is no religion on the service of the heart. There is no organization outside Islam that will compete with the perfection of Islam. With the way Allah has molded Islam and how Muslims are expected to look like. If you bring it closer to Islam, no matter the program, it will, it will all bow for Islam as the best way of life, as a perfected way of life. Islam has programs. Islam has programs. It has projects. Islam has teachings and principles to better our life. No Muslim will live a bad life as long as he or she follows the tenets of Islam. Even to the atheists, those who do not believe in the existence of God, if they watch you behave, if they watch you speak, if they watch you relate, Wallahi, they will bow for the beauty of Islam.
واحتفل مختلف البلدان بهذا اليوم من خلال تنظيم برامج 23rd of June of every year عباد الله even a country that backs itself with Allah that turn its back against Allah that is the United States of America pick certain things from Islam when you go there when you deal with them you relate with them it's very unfortunate that sometimes you find Islam in them but they are not Muslims I'm talking of the Europeans the Americans and what of you you relate with them they are more sincere they are more straightforward they are more truthful they are more honest than we that claim Islam you see Islam in them every 23rd of June United States of America marks and declare a special program of celebration of widows and orphans every 23rd of June of every year tell me if we have better understanding of our religion you will agree with me that widows and orphans are part of our responsibility as an ummah, as a community, as a nation. Orphans around us are our responsibilities. Widows around us. What program do we have, we Muslim communities, for our widows? What project do we have for the orphans? Nobody cares about orphans nowadays. Nobody cares about widows nowadays. And these are certain things that are clearly mentioned in the Holy Quran. That's what I'm trying to say. That to tell you the perfection of Islam to the extent that even United States of America have to declare every 23rd of June of every year as a special day to celebrate widows and orphans. They are not to teach us how to deal with widows. They are not in position to teach us how to handle orphans because it is actually part of our major project and program in Islamic monotheism. Today, some people are just praying, reciting the Quran, waking up in the night, praying to Allah, and coming up with all sorts of acts of ibadah. But certain things are destroying it simultaneously. As they do it, they get destroyed because they fail their responsibility in certain category of people clearly mentioned in the Holy Quran. One of those category of people is the widows around us. Whether related ones or not, they are our responsibility in so many ways. Orphans at all levels are our responsibilities. There is this channel in United, um, in United Kingdom. This is um, Islam Channel, if I'm not mistaken. Islam Channel. Yes, it is situated in London. They said, give a dollar to an orphan to change his or her life. A dollar. This is their campaign on daily basis. There's no day you are going to, you, are, you will turn to Islam channel that there be no campaign of donation to the well-being and welfare of orphans. These are certain things you can easily do to earn your automatic certificate to Al Jannah. And I'll continue to say it. Such a rich man a wealthy man with halal money that ends up in hellfire is an un the most unfortunate being. If you are rich, you are wealthy, you fail to use this word judiciously to the point that you are admitted into hellfire. You are a unfortunate human being. Then you have money. You cannot buy mercy of Allah. You cannot purchase forgiveness of Allah. You cannot buy paradise easily from this world. You are very unfortunate. 
you are an unfortunate being, unfortunate follower of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. So, if you cannot buy paradise, Allah says it directly in Hadith al Qudsi. Fima yarwihi arabbihi azza wa jalla. This hadith is clearly stated. It's an hadith al Quds. I do not need to explain what hadith al Quds means again. You are at this level, one of us doesn't know what hadith al Quds says, then you have no proper knowledge of your religion. There is direct hadith from the Holy Prophet Muhammad. There is revelation of Al Quran, that is Al Quran. The one Allah will say, Jibril, go and reveal this to him. Of course, Jibril comes to the Holy Prophet Muhammad to reveal Al Quran to him, bit by bit, for the period of 23 years. But there are certain conversations, there are certain discussions between prophets of Allah and Allah Himself in the absence of Jibril. That is what we call a disappoint. This kind of speech is very close to Al Quran Al Karim. It's directly from Allah. The way Al Quran was documented. It says, Al Malu Mali. Of course, this world is of mine. The world that you are carrying all about is for me. It does not belong to any of you. Well, Jannah to Jannah. And that paradise you long to be admitted to is, of course, mine as well. Want to Abidi, and you are all my servants. Take these three major points. The world with you is not for you, it is for me. Paradise is not for any of us, it's for me. And you are all for me as well. Then what happened? Purchase by my paradise with my wealth. Buy my paradise with my money, except blood money. Rich men are supposed to be in paradise. Uh -uh. One of the Sahaba says, I'm digressing and I have a point to make here. One of the Sahaba says, one of the Sahaba lodged a complaint to the Holy Prophet Muhammad. That they, what else that is left for us in terms of reward from Allah? Rich men have taken all the reward. They pray the way we pray. They fight the way we fast. They do tasbihat, tahalilat. They do all these things. Yet, they still have money to do sadaka, to pay zakat, to build mosques, to build Islamia, to support widows and orphans. This Sahaba was complaining bitterly to the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a well-programmed leader, an exemplary leader, prepared by his creator, now responded saying, well, you are right, but has Allah not provided even you, the poor one, what you can give sadaka with? Even if you don't have money. Kullu tasbihi sadaka. Kullu tahalili sadaka. Ima tutul aza anitoriki sadaka. If you don't have money, if you don't subhanallah, go and check your file. It's filled with reward. Kullu tahalili, la ilaha illallah, that you utter from your mouth is a form of sadaqa. Removal of sharp and harmful objects on the road in order for it not to harm the passerby is also a sadaqa. Then tell me what will a rich man, what reason will he give not to have certificate of paradise before his death or her death? When we have widows around us, Ibad Allah. For Islam, Mundus Sana Ta'alfi wa Arba Amea wa Hamsa wa Arbaon. Kod Haddal Aramil wa Aitamu Hukukahum wa Jal al Ahsani ilayhi min Azami Ibadat. 
since 1445 years ago has laid down has discussed clearly the rights of widows and orphans before United States of America. Call our attention if actually we know what we are doing and we have proper understanding of the religion we claim to practice. Since then, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has discussed this. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فِي حَدِيثِ أَبِي هُرِيرَ رضي الله عنه قال قال الساعي على الأرملة والساعي على الأرملة والمسكين كالمجاهد في سبيل الله since 1445 years ago where is United States of America then رسول الله says those who take it upon themselves to take care of the widows, to feed the widows, to take widows as their responsibility and the needy are like mujahid fi sabilillah. They are like strivers in the cause of Allah. Those who go into the war front and fight for the cause of Allah will have the same reward with them. If you are among those who take care of the widows, and at the same time, the, uh, what do you call it, the offers. Hasta al-Islam ala al-Ihsan ilayhi wa laysa fil yateem aibun. Aw, madhammutun fakam min yateemin faqa ghirahu wa balaga mablaga rafi'an. Fa minihum ulama malau dunya ilman. To be an orphan is not a kind of misfortune. To be an orphan is not a sin. It's not a crime to be an orphan. Yes. We all know what orphans means. Whoever loses his parent at tender age, is referred to as yetim. You can use it as aitam amriyatama. Jamu taksir. That is the plural for orphans in Arabic. Yetim au aitam. Islam has programs for them. And there are orphans who have attained higher position in life there are a great shuyuk among the orphans. There are a great ulama among the orphans. There are orphans today among governors, ministers, imams, and what have you. It is not a sin to be an orphan. It is not. Ibad al abrar laqad hafiz al-Islam bil yatim al-huqahu al-maliyah وجعل أكل مال اليتيم بغير حق من أكبر الكبائر ويل لمن أكل مال اليتيم ويل له يقولون أموال اليتام الظلم إنما يقولون في بطونهم النار وصيص It is our responsibility for those who happen to be the the executor of the affairs of the orphans who have orphans under their care. Foster care, foster caring, the careful. We call it foster caring. Those who accept orphans to live with them so that they can take good care of them, so that they can give them a very good upbringing. Wallahi, you are doing that to the pleasure of Allah if you do it well. You are doing that to receive Allah's blessings and mercy if you do it well. We have problems in this regard, though. I wish I have more than 40 minutes. I can stress this. We have problems in this part of the world when it comes to the issue of orphan and orphanage homes. Orphanage homes. Number one, hmm. Ya Rabbal Alameen. We joke with Allah. 
We toy with Allah sometimes. We toy with his anger and destruction and the wrath of Allah. With those orphans under your care, you are maltreating them. If you don't know, you better know. You are only keeping softness. Punishment for your children tomorrow. If you maltreat orphans under your care, and if you eat up orphans' money, anyhow, you are in with Allah, directly with Allah. You cannot squander orphans' money because you have the opportunity that the money is being put into your care, is kept in your account. You are the one taking care of three, two, five orphans, and you have their millions, their properties with you. You spend it anyhow, sending your own children abroad, and the offers are attending public school here. You are in trouble with Allah. These are not as very, I don't know me, eh? You don't know? You don't get sense? Are you insane? You know how to send your children abroad and kill the orphans who have the wealth you are spending on your children in public school in Nigeria here. Eh? In Nigeria, he has said, ah, I don't know, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. You think Allah is a stupid person like you? No, you know what? If you meet somebody's child and you knock the child unjust, unjustly, you knock the child, Dup! stupid boy, without offending you, that is somebody's child. You know how Allah operates? Allah will never knock you. He will knock you back. He will send someone to find a big stick and hit it on the head of your child. That's how Allah pays you back. This one, nobody said to you, we meet Allah on the day of Qiyamah. No, 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 no. no. Inna hu la sari'ul hisab. Inna Allah sari'ul hisab. This one is a quick reward. Instant reward, instant result. You deal with somebody's children, Allah will not deal with you. He will deal with your children directly. So you know how it feels. There's no problem about that. So if the money and property of orphans put under your care, Allah says, like a lavina, la yakul yakuluna fi butun, la yakuluna fi butuni him, illa naran, wasaya silauna sa'ira. You know what Allah says? That you are consuming into your belly is nothing but hellfire. You, you mismanage orphan's property, put under your care. We have this problem about the law. I don't know how we are going to solve it. Your immediate senior brother, elder brother, look at the children you are maltreating. And over orphans who have the word with which you live upon, yet you deal with them. Some will, will attack them spiritually. Some of them will be falling sick. Some will, no, just common sense should tell you, would you not come back to Allah as the virullah? Ah. No. No, be that kind of one, no. Because common sense tells this is your children, this is your late brother's children. And you know how you treat your children? You know how you treat your late brother's children? Some of some have sent them on exile spiritually so that they can sit on their property. Ya Rabbal Alameen. How would you go scot free before Allah? Islam is a perfect religion. It has given you opportunity of using part of the orphan's money judiciously. You have that opportunity. Yes. Faliyakul bil ma'rufi. Faliyakul bil ma'ruf. If an orphan is placed under your care and hundreds of millions are paid into your account for the orphan and you are the one training the orphan along with your children and and Allah sees you, you are a poor man. You are what? You are a poor man. But these children are put under your care. What do you do? Very clear in Islam. Because Allah knows you are a poor man, of course, before they bring the children under your care. What you do is put them in a reasonable school. In a reasonable school. If it is only half 
or to talk of your children's school fees you can afford, take the, the, the remaining from those children with you reasonably and train them together like your own biological children. That's what Islam says so. Use your sense. If you want to eat, eat it small, small with sense. That Islam, look at Islam. Allah is so considerate. He knows it will happen. You will be tempted and the situation will come up in such a way that you must touch the money. Okay, you have eight children under your care. Three of them are orphans. Five are yours. No food in the house again. No food at all. You have nothing again except the money of the orphans. Gently go into that money. Buy the most necessary thing that you need in the house with that money because you are going to feed all of them together. Buy the food from their money and feed your children all together sincerely, judiciously. Me lie if you lie. That is Islam. Oh. But if you use that opportunity to squander their money, you start traveling abroad, buying cars, gifts from orphans' money. Allah says you are eating hellfire into your belly and your abode will surely be hellfire. That's that. The same thing goes to the widows. I have a lot in the script here. It just by the time it's not on my side. How do you treat orphans? Number one, it'amuhu mayakfe. Even if the orphan has nothing, it's your responsibility to take care of him or her. Since you uh, you accepted kafalatahu or kafalataha, you accept to put him or her under your care to train him or her. You accept it. You are not forced to take it. Otherwise, we have orphanage homes. But what is making one to cry is that how many Islamic orphanage homes do we have in Nigeria? How many? Sometimes you want to select the orphanage homes to take certain things to. It becomes a problem. In this whole Abuja, I think we have only one or one and a half orphanage home. And we have millionaires, millionaires among us, no orphanage homes. But Allah will make you a special servant of His. Except you say, Allah, Allah, Allah just give us 10 million. Allah, Allah give us goodie. All we want. That's all we want. You don't want to do things secretly. It becomes absolute secrecy between you and your creator, and you find it up there. Those are the things we are expected to do about Allah. How many orphanage homes do we have? The widows around us. Islam says, La tarisun nisa akarhan. Don't inherit women by force. Because the husband died, the only thing you know is that he want to inherit her. And you cannot force her against her will. And if she turns your request down, you must not maltreat her. If you do, Allah will deal with you. That is Islam. You either allow her to go and remarry, and you can't stop her from remarrying. You can't stop her. That is Islam for you, Ibad Allah. Even if you have 100 children for your family, if she's still in a stage of getting remarried, let her go out and remarry. If you want to marry her, that's why it's also Islamic. If she doesn't want, it's also Islamic. If she wants to get remarried, it's also Islamic. Don't deal with her. Don't mess her up. The moment you offer her that, you say, ah, no, I like you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I know you are my husband, a younger boy, but Kai, I'm sorry. In fact, I'm okay. I'm okay. You say, eh, hey, you are okay. You start dealing with her and her children, and you call yourself Muslims. No, Islam says no to this. You cannot. You have to provide shelter for orphans. It's very important. You have to give orphans some training you are giving your biological children. If you cannot release this child to the family and declare your intention, I cannot and you are free in the sight of Allah. But if you are taking the responsibility of orphans, Allah will ask you. You have questions to answer in the sight of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The summary is, 
whatever you know is necessary as a necessity. Whatever you know is necessary as necessity to your children is also necessary for the orphans. You don't have to be told. Take, for example, like a poor man, you have the children under you, and it is now time for salah. No money to sew salah clothes for your, even your own biological children. You can't say because of that you won't sew for the orphans, so because they have money with you, it is their right. What do you do? They are six in number. Two are orphans, four are your biological children. So six for them. Moderate cloth. Moderately. So it for them, moderately. So that the, even the other will not be happy not seeing your biological children in the same salah cloth. So Islam says, so it. So for them. Allow all of them to be happy together. That's all about Islam. If Islam could give you this opportunity, do you still have to squander their money? You don't have, if you have your own money, don't touch their money. Don't. And it says, when they become mature adults, when they are about to get married, release their property to them. A child of 25 years to 30 today is an adult, even from 18 constitutionally. Once you test the, the, the brain and understand, say, yes, this boy can handle 100 of million, release it to him. Some people die with orphans' property with them, which is supposed to have been released long time ago before they are dead. They are in trouble with Allah. That is why Wasiya is very important. Wasiya. We can't really call Wasiya will. No, that is not will. A document that tells your family after your demise how to go about your properties. Those you are owing, those who are owing you, those who have your property under your care, document it. As soon as I say, none of you should, should fall asleep at any point in time in the night until you have your Wasiya prepared. You must prepare your wasiya. A document, put it under your pillow. If you sleep and you cannot wake up again, they will find the document there. Allah. That is Islam. Don't give us problem. This one will come say you are owing 100 million. We don't know those who are owing you. We don't know who you are owing. We don't know the money of the offers under your care in your account. That will not tell you it's coming tomorrow. Anybody can fall dead. You can sleep and refuse to wake up again. Solve the problem before your death. Always document. That is Islam, Ibad Allah. Today, let us all start it if you have not been doing it. Especially if you are owing certain people and certain people are owing you. Or a friend keeps certain amount of money in your account. Whether you still am or not, now I know now you accept that. You have to document, put it before you sleep. That's why Rasulullah says, we don't follow the teaching of Islam. That's why we continue to have problems, and we continue to have until we follow it directly. Put, document it. Salaamu alaikum. I am so, 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 so. So, 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 Alaji has one billion era with me on so, so, so business, on so, so, so date. So, so, so person is owing me so, so a man. So, so, so offers are having so, so, so property under my care in case so, I am so, 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 so date and signature, then you can sleep. If you wake up, alhamdulillah. If you refuse to wake up, alhamdulillah. That is Islam, ibadallah. Wala hawla wala quwata. Alhamdulillahi wahda. Wassalatu wassalamu ala man la nabi yarara. Praises are due to Allah, the one and only, no one but him. May be upon the apostle of Allah that no apostle comes after him till the end of the world. Amma ba'd fa ya ibadallah. Inna husn al-qiyam al-aytam wal-ahsan ila al-aramil wa ib'ad al-adha anihum عبادة عظيمة من عظم الإبادات وقربة جليلة من أجل القربان
I reinstate by saying, being kind to widows and the orphans is one of the act of ibadah, the great one for that matter. One of act of righteousness that Allah is pleased with at all time. If you take good care of widows and orphans, certain reward awaits you here and hereafter. It is our responsibility. If you want to do sadaqah, think of the widows first. Sometimes they go in Nasrat here. Every year we celebrate widows during Women Week up here. So the women leader, we purchase some kind of um, clothing materials. We get their number among our jama'a, especially some of them above 60 and 70. So at the point I was there up, and I was asked to call out the widows for their gifts. So they started coming out, they started giving them their gift. So we pray for them. Some of them are even crying. One married woman also came out. Married woman whose husband received well alive. He said, Elijah, are you a widow? Hey, well, I'm a widow. I said, but it's also your husband. I said, it's a dead living husband. It's a message to you. Don't let your whole wife go and declare herself as a widow if you are not doing the right thing. You know. Otherwise, they will just send you the video clip that so 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 declared to be a widow. Say, you are up. I'm alive. You are not alive. You are only existing. You are not living. That's another message for you, Ibad Allah. If you do justly, rightly and responsibly to the widows, Allah will give you a peace of mind. You have a peace of mind. One day, one of the Sahaba, oh no, a man came to the Holy Prophet Muhammad, Yashku qalbihi. He came to lodge a complaint to the Holy Prophet Muhammad of the hardness of his heart, that my heart is always hard. It's always hard at all times. What I want to do about that, no way. My heart is already satanic in nature. Ya Rasulullah, oh messenger of Allah, say, go and be kind to orphans. Go and then you have peace of mind and your heart becomes godly. Go and be nice to orphans. If you want to do something, I can look for orphans. Take care of them. What is the essence of your billions and millions? If you drop there today, it does not belong to you again. You, can, you are not even assured that it belongs, it will, it will get to your children. What you did to others will be done to you. That is when younger brother of yours will come and say, if any of you mess up, I will fire any of you here. He said, talk. Yeah, he, remember what you did before you died. Too. It's good. That's why I repeat, oh, people who have money are not expected. Good money, halal money, are not expected in hellfire. How can you be admitted to hellfire with money? Akwa Abu Deke Dameka, eh? With money. You can buy paradise with money. You can buy it. I quote me anywhere. These are these Qudsi. There are orphans, there are widows. There is hardship in the land. Some people cry in the morning, they cry in the afternoon for lack of food. The same thing in the night, they sleep in hunger. And you have money and they are your neighbors. You can't buy paradise through them. You eat and even throw away. Is that Islam? That is not Islam. Be merciful to the widows and the orphans. Don't allow the United States of America every 23rd of June to teach us how to take care of widows and orphans. It is part of Islam. This is part of the recommendation of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. You are assured of being admitted to paradise if you take good care of widows and orphans. Don't eat orphans' money. No ten ten umura. Umura cannot clear your sin. You eat their money, it is from their money you are going for umura. You say haram money. To go and do halal act is a lie. It's a lie. Don't destroy us and go and stay. Every year you must go for hack. Every year, every year, hack. Every year, 20 umura, and you are destroying Nigeria here. It's a lie. Allah is not a fool like you. 
you will have got a whole floor in one uh, Zamzam hotel in Mecca. All your family, your friends, paying for their Hajj and Umrah every month. And you have destroyed our country. Allah is not a fool like you. If you like, go and die inside Saudi Arabia. Hellfire straight. Inna Allah ya Amr Rabi Yisan. Wa ita izul kurba. Wa yani ha an yifasha al mukal bagi. Ya izu kula Allah kuta zakaru. We are used to this ayah. Say yes to whatever Allah says yes to. Say no to whatever Allah says yes to. Wa bana taqubbal minna. Naka ta sani uladin. Wa tuba alina ya mulana. Naka ta wabu rahim. Wa kfil lana rahamna. Inna ka da gafuru. Subhana rabbika. Wa bil izzati wa ma yasfud. Salam ala musalik. Walhamdulillah. Wa bila alakum ila salatikum. Ya rahamakum Allah.